The House of Representatives has poked holes in the purported launch of Nigeria Air at the twilight of the administration, former President Muhammad Buhari declaring it a fraud. Um, Chairman of the House Committee on Aviation, Nolim Naj, declared the launch of Nigeria Air fraud after the major stakeholders of the deal between the federal government and Ethiopian Airlines denied knowledge of the launch. Uh, the Ministry of Aviation claims Nigeria Air was only unveiled and not launched which the committee dismissed as an attempt to divert the lawmaker's attention. And joining us to discuss this is uh, Sonny Madka. He is a political analyst. Thank you so much, Mr. Madka, for joining us. Good evening. Yeah, thanks, Anne, for having me. Thank you. Great. Um, let's start by looking at the situation of Nigeria. And not just um, from two weeks ago, I'm talking about from the moment it was mentioned and how many Nigerians criticized it. Um, and of course, Nigerians made mention of how um, Nigeria Airways was also, um, you know, collapsed and made moribund by politicians. Um, could it be that maybe we didn't have enough faith in the government for Nigeria Air to kick off? Or was it that Nigeria's government has no business doing business? Well, um, right from 2018, when Nigeria A for, you know, project was noted, according to my friend, Ahmad Wanka, he said, uh, it's a good idea. It has good structures. Uh, it has a good process when it started. But the major problem was lack of transparency. The stakeholders were not taking into cognizance in the other processes. Uh, if you look at the structure, the structure is nice. We talk about 49, 5, 46. That is Ethiopian having 49%. Federal government, 5%. And of course, there's, you know, investors, um, 46%. And you know, in this kind of project, there are consortiums. There must have been a process, a public procurement process to determine who is the preferred by, you know, bidder. There must be auditor. There must be international, uh, of, you know, uh, probably you can call them uh, advisors. So it's not just something that you wake up and do. So the problem we have is that all these processes, they've been on and they've been ongoing. But the problem is the people are not carried along. And that is why for when it was launched, I think last year, without any aircraft, people came out and we are against it because they weren't carried out. They weren't carried on, I mean, because if people were carried by or with, they could have been able to, okay, no, oh, this is the state we'll be in. But nobody is aware of the state we'll be in. And we spend a lot of money, billions of naira, on that particular launch where all that we saw was just uh, the photograph or the pictorial of uh, Nigeria A. It, it started from that time to give people an idea, look, is this a good process? Is this a good project? A project to be able to give the stakeholders a clearer picture of every process, all the process to be made known to people. But unfortunately, it wasn't like that. I think that's why people are looking at it from the angle of, you know, looking at it from the angle of fraud, you know. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, in Nigeria, we keep talking about issues because you talk about unveiling is a different thing from launching. So when you're unveiling something, what are you unveiling for? Because the first one that we had when we, we all shown the tutorial was what we think and was assumed and what was proclaimed to be the launching. Now the unveiling of the aircraft, how on earth are you unveil an aircraft? without the stakeholders being carried along. And of course, when on that 26th May, when uh, the euphoria you know, started you know, filtering to the public, people were like, what are you talking about? How do you just come in like this? Mostly when NACC has not even given you the, 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 all the conditions, the certificate, the license for you to comment. What's the problem? Why are we in a hurry to, you know, uh, unveil an aircraft that, according to people, was painted 
just externally. But internally, you know, it was uh, Ethiopian. So you can see that it's like a ripple, you know. Mm. When the let, 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 let me, let's, quickly, let's quickly go to um, the House um, Committee um, representative who was speaking. Um, that's uh, Nolim Naji. He's the chairman of the House Committee. Um, he's, he represents PDP. Let's take a listen to what he had to say and how he described the process. And then we'll come back and have this conversation. The Nigeria Air Project. The issue was shrouded in secrecy to the extent that it was fraudulently displayed as a new national carrier, contrary to the extant court order and international rules that strictly guided airline operations. This indeed was an embarrassment to the committee. Why will you, for whatever reason, having an interim MD be in a hurry to unveil a national carrier on the last day of your administration? Why? We are not part of the launch and we do not support the launch, especially at a time issues are yet to be cleared. The committee here by resolve to one, direct the Federal Ministry of Aviation and its partners in the Nigeria Air Project to immediately suspend any operation regarding to Nigeria Air and every other action with respect to Nigeria Air. The aircraft that came in and left was a legitimate charter flight. You see, ever since 2018, all you'd ever seen about Nigeria Air aircraft were pictures, drawings, not the real aircraft. And we felt it was time to show what the real aircraft would look like. Was it reasonably necessary, you know, you have to take this to the to take taxpayers' money and charter an aircraft all the way from Ethiopia to come here and for unveiling. If the purpose is just to show Nigerians how the aircraft is going through. We have had the pictures on social media where it was unveiled in Fambu. We, we haven't got a license yet to operate. If you had asked me the question, I could not you, I mean if the social media had asked me the question, I would have said, we haven't got to that stage yet. We are not at the point of operating the airline yet at all. Very interesting session, if you ask me, there was the House Committee, in fact, that they've said we put, a, we put a stop to anything that has to do with Nigeria Air. Now, interestingly, that captain was trying to tell us, in fact, he said that uh, what we saw that day was a legitimate chartered aircraft. Um, why do we have to, why does the Nigerian government, and I'm talking about Nigerian government in general, not just about uh, President Buhari or President Tinubu, why do we have to go into ventures that will suck money or take the monies that we don't even have, as opposed to allowing for these businesses to thrive? I mean, we had Nigerian Airways, it's more bond now. Um, we still have airlines who are still dragging us to pay them, uh, you know, to give them, the repatriate their funds in dollars. We, we have so many problems in that sector. Why Nigeria Air? Why do we not face other things? I'm just asking you as somebody uh, who analyzes these kinds of things. And it's, a, it's a general problem. It's not only on A or Nigerian A. Uh, thank God, I'm so happy about what the honorable member said. You know, and unfortunately, we don't realize that whatever money that is spent from the government cover is a common wealth of the entire citizen. So it's not just about government money. It is my money, it is your money. So every expense made is an expense made on our behalf. You know, so you can imagine how much was expended. And unfortunately, we like to coin language. The MD Dio, you know, coined the language, the legitimate charter. What is legitimate charter in that? As far as I'm concerned, that is a fraud because you cannot bring in an aircraft intentionally or deliberately painted to deceive Nigeria. 24 hours, that plane went back to Ethiopia and now it's flying as Ethiopian Airways. So what, who are, who are we really trying to, you know, um, uh, you know, you know, bamboozle on that? And that sets me to issues about citizens. And I have always been asking this question. Why are Nigerian citizens the victims 
of every successive government failure. Why are we always the, 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 the victim? Each time there's a problem, the government will come up and give us this plenty of excuses as if we are so dumb or morons. As far as I'm concerned, this particular uh, you know, unveiling, I'm not talking about the process because as of now, nobody is aware of even the process, how we've gotten up to this. But what happened on the 26th of May was something that I can't even fathom how Nigerians will take that. So that yeah, let, let, let me let talk you. about some of the resolutions that were made by the House House Committee. I just want to quickly go to the number three um, resolution. They said that the federal government, including Mr. President, should ensure that all individual groups or organizations involved in the shenanigans, I'm quoting them directly, uh, named Nigeria Air Takeoff, uh, that they are all brought to book. Now, let's move our attention to Hadi Sirika and, of course, all the people that worked with him, including the gentleman who was trying to make the case uh, for the committee. Do we see a President Tinubu coming down hard on the Hadi Sirika and, of course, all of the people involved um, following the directives of, of the House Committee on this particular matter, um, knowing that the President has also been talking tough about other issues and the, and the fight against corruption. This is a, a, a lot of question marks. This particular issue of Nigeria air takeoff has a lot of question marks around. Do we see the President acting on what the House Committee has said? Uh, uh, it's just a story. The story for the next uh, uh, generation to ponder as part of their historical uh, perspective. How many times have you been, you know, heard about people, you know, being probed? Uh, some of them even caught red-handed. How many of them have been uh, prosecuted? How many of them have been in jail? You know, even recently, we're talking about the what we are going through right now. The issue about the web subsidy. Uh, people have pointed out times. People have pointed against NNPC. Expositions have been made, uh, you know, about what happened, you know, about the oil swap and whatever. Now, what is happening? If you look at the, this particular story you're talking about and what the House uh, has advocated, uh, I think nothing is going to happen. I'm telling you the truth because there's no trajectory, there's no precedent. Is there a precedent of people being jailed at least for certain things who will by now? understand oh something is going to happen many of our people right now many of these uh, government officials that have left a lot of them have been accused of one thing or the other one corrupt issue but is there nobody and you know the worst aspect of it that our security agencies who ought to arrest this one who are ought to prosecute them are the ones guiding them so how do you arrest the person who who is being guided by the same person who ought to arrest the person. So this is the problem we're having. As of today, if you look at what is happening, the oil, okay, look at the oil. As before now, they say we are consuming 65 mi uh, million uh, 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 gallon, or let me put it, uh, liters of oil, uh, petrol every, every day. But research has shown after this that it's just 13 million. And we are still paying, and up to now, People have been calling that people should be arrested in this oil scam. Nobody. You see, it's, it's one thing to form a, you know, a, a probe investigative uh, panel. It's another thing to enforce what the probe uh, has come in. And that is the problem we're having in this country. We've all had a lot of uh, probes, a lot of investigations that truly indicted people. But at the end of it, it ends like nothing. So until we understand what institutions are, and of course that once you offend something, you will be punished for that. Nobody is going to, to, to listen to what the honorable people are talking about. In China, you, you kill, you are killed in your family house so that people in your family house will know that, look, you saw. If in Germany or any other country, you do something that is against the government, against the people, you are, you are prosecuted and sanctioned and it's jailed. But look at it. All this in and we are not talking about. Nothing is going to happen. It's ended. As far as I'm concerned, look at how much that was expended to just fly an aircraft, paint it, confuse all Nigeria. That alone, that, that alone, that alone ought to end that minister. The highest sanction ever because it tricked all Nigeria. 
Is there, is there minister that bought 10 trucks or 5 trucks at 12 billion naira? And people shouted, people thought, which kind of truck are you buying? People saw the truck that was driven by him. And people were shouting, nothing happened. So this is the issue. Until we make our laws to be, uh, what, a, 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 you know, everybody's law. Not law for them and us. Because that's what we are facing today. And of course, the judiciary should, you know, stand up and be what people should expect of them. Once somebody is sent to you for procedure for you to get, even if he fell that he's sick, because that's what they do. Most of them will say they are sick. They are, they cannot work. They cannot do this. And because they are granted bail. No, let them go to prison and enjoy that, that, uh, sickness there. Because the number of Nigerians that they've put in, in prison or they've, uh, even given this, uh, sickness in, in terms of indirect ways, there are more. People are dying because of policy initiatives that are anti-people. So anybody in this country, if you're found guilty, because according to somebody said, the contractors are the ones who are giving, who are, con who are giving the contract to themselves. So if you look at the government scenario today, the procurement are that supposed to be the purview, the, 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 the bedrock for every contract. It's not being followed. So most of even the government okay. agencies are moving like, I'm talking about the person that gave himself a grant cutting of 500 million. What happened? So the contract you are talking about, even this contract you are talking about the airway, people benefited who are in government. So what happened? It's not going to, it's not, nothing is going to happen to them. I'm telling you the truth. It's not going mm -hmm. to be part of Nigerian system where abnormality is now treated as normal. Well, I guess that um, what will happen in this case remains to be seen. A valedictory session is going to hold, and this uh, National Assembly is going to step aside for the 10th Assembly. Uh, let's see what have these guys pick up from, and let's see um, how the President and, of course, security agencies deal with this going forward. But I want to say thank you. Sonny Madukai is a political analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Anne. Before you go, let me just put out one thing now, and that is that I'm happy that the president, who is now a president, uh, is, is part of the cabal. So now it takes the cabal to break the cabal, and I'm happy he's doing a lot to ensure that nobody is more Nigerian than other Nigerians. Thank you, and God bless okay. Nigeria. All right. Thank you very okay. much. Yes, and uh, that's the show tonight. We want to thank you all for participating and being uh, here. Don't forget, if you want to um, be part of all of our previous episodes, just go to Plus TV Africa on YouTube, like, subscribe, and they catch up on all our previous episodes. I'm Mary Anacone. Do have a pleasant night rest tomorrow. <laughs>